Hello, this is MakerJ101, and in this video I'm going to show you some induction heating. I finally got around to um, playing around with some induction heating and making this video. So, um, yeah, so that was just uh, me heating up some stainless steel um, tubing. And um, I also finally got around to doing pancake induction heating, like flat. Um, works really good. So, in this video, that's what I'm going to show you. So, let's get started. Alright, so first just a little bit of background before we go all and just do some induction heating. Um, so I'm using my ZVS driver to um, do this induction heating. These are using two IRFP 260 MOSFETs, 260N MOSFETs. I believe they can handle 50 amps, uh, 200 volts, I think. Um, so they are awesome MOSFETs. If you do not have any, get some. They're like $3 a piece or something like that on eBay. Get some. They last forever. I got 10 of them and I have not even blown one yet and I've done all kinds of crazy things to them so um but um so mainly they they're gonna last forever because they're rated at 50 amps and you're most likely not gonna have a supply that's gonna be able to put out 50 amps um, so I have my Variac which is rated for 10 amps but I've pushed it up to 20 amps well actually 30 amps when I was doing um, my flyback but with this I only push it up to about 15 amps max and then I start to have problems like my bridge rectifier diodes start to get kind of sad there. Um, I actually bought um, five of these. They're supposed to be 50 amps, um, 1,000 volts. That's what they're supposed to be rated for. But I didn't really think about it um, that since I'm going to be running on so low voltage that they're actually not the best option. So when I get up to about 15 amps on one of these at about 20 or 30 volts, they blow. So I have to connect two of them in parallel and then these two are, seem to be lasting okay, but if I push it up to 30 amps, it's probably going to blow them. But um, anyways, so that's my power supply. Um, so Variac, and then I've got some capacitors there. Um, my normal setup for my um, ZVS driver, and that is being powered by a 12-volt um, adapter for the gate drive because I have a slightly different circuit without the Zener diodes. Um, so the gates of the MOSFETs are being powered right here. These are the little um, 470 ohm resistors. Those go to the um, to that power supply. Oops. And the little cooling fan is also running off of that power supply. Um, so then here I've got a kind of weird setup um, that I found online. I was originally using two coils like this for or a center tap coil like this for the um, uh, induction heating but this was very inefficient because of the skin effect um, you have to look that up I'm not really going to explain it but it's basically when there's high frequency the current tends to um, go to the outside of the wire so only the if you have a very large diameter wire only the outermost um, portion of the wire is going to be um, carrying the current so there's a lot of resistance there and it's not very efficient so that's why they have something called lux wire which is very fine wire that's all insulated from each other so it makes basically more surface area where the current can flow um, so it's much more efficient so I have a bunch of lux wire on here these are also lux wire they use lux wire in transformers like this um, high frequency stuff so I got some lux wire and was playing around with that and um, built this, but the lux wire I got from for that was from TV yokes. So these have about ten strands of wire, and you just have to be really careful when you pull them off of here that you don't break any strands, or else then you have to repair it. But um, it's not too bad. So that's what I did there, and I believe I wrapped three strands together to um, form one of these. So there's thirty strands right here, and um, then it's center tapped. But I'm not actually using the center tap because I have this different configuration because I found that it seems more efficient and also it was much easier to do with the um, pancake coil because then I don't have to have two um, coils so with this setup you only need one coil but you need two inductors that are the same and I could pull up the circuit diagram here that's what the circuit diagram looks like so you essentially just have your normal coil or you just have one coil here which is your working coil and then you have those two inductors here and I've actually not found that those are real critical what those are the rest of the circuits the same except that you don't have the um, these replace the input inductor 
Um, you'd have one input inductor on the positive rail that is pretty much eliminated and used. you use those two um, inductors. So I've actually used pretty much, I've tried all of these inductors, replaced them for these, and these seem to be the most efficient because they're the lux wire, so they're best for high frequency, high current, but um, the value doesn't seem to matter too much. So I have about, um, I believe there's about 12 turns each on here, or 10 turns each, I think. So that means that there's actually 20 turns in total on there. Um, this one has 5 and 5, so this one has 10. But um, this one seems to work a lot better. It's more efficient than this one. It could also be the way that I wound it, because this one I twisted them together after, or before I wound it onto the test tube. This one I just kind of wound them on. But um, this one's much more efficient. Um, so, so yeah, let's... Um, now, I also tried using, because I didn't want to um, have two coils when I was doing the pancake coil, I um, decided to try this first, and this is, most people use this method. So you have your two coils that are center tapped going in, and then it basically turns it into one coil. So I tried this, it didn't seem to work very well at all. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I probably didn't have the turn the coils right, and probably if I was using lux wire, it'd be a lot more efficient. But this just seemed to overheat. The core got hot. Just everything just didn't work very well. It didn't seem very efficient at all. So um, this seems to be the way to go, at least for me. All right, so now we'll do a little bit of induction heating on this little um, nail. It's a fairly small nail, but smaller things like this nail really don't seem to work all that well just because they're so small. and um, but yeah, actually, I don't really need the fan, cooling fan because under um, f if I keep it under five amps, and little things don't just don't absorb the energy, so I have to keep it under about five amps, or else the coil just totally overheats. I also have a thermocouple on the coil, so we'll just um, bring it up to. So here's my current. This is my voltage. Bring it up to five amps, and you'll see how fast it heats up. Oh, there we go, it's starting to glow. And the coil is heating up a little bit. But it's 4.4 amps. And that, that's about as hot as that nail will get. I mean, if you push it up to 10 amps, it'll get a little bit, a little bit hotter. It'll start glowing more, but the coil will also get very, very, very hot. It's still pretty cool right now. It's starting to get pretty warm. But... Alright, so here's a much bigger nail. It's probably about a 3 inch nail. And we'll crank it up to 7 ish amps, I suppose. We're up at 8 amps. So, just watch the temperature over there. And if it starts climbing too fast, I take the current down. It's climbing slowly. It's still hot from the last run. And it is starting to glow. So, that was probably like, I don't know, 15 seconds. But even this nail won't really glow all that hot. It's dropped down to six amps, and that's because the current drops like that because the when the metal heats up, the resistance changes, and that changes the um, how much heat basically it can absorb, or it, how much um, magnetic field it can absorb, or something like that. I, for, I forget exactly, but but um, yeah. So we're at 23, 23 amp. Blah, 23 volts, 5.7 amps. So, there's your voltage and current. And it's pretty happy. Check the temperature on here. Warm. Coil's starting to get a little bit hot. I try to keep it under 300 or else it starts to smell. <laughs> but, yeah, it's glowing nice. And these coils stay fairly cool. So, yeah, that's the nail. Now this stainless steel tubing is what really surprised me. It heats up so fast. I mean, it's not that thin a wall, but it heats up really fast, and it really doesn't require very much power either. So our coil's at a 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and we will um, crank it up to... I'll take it up to... We'll go to 7 amps, why not? So 7.7 .7 amps right now, 29 volts. And it 
is starting to glow a little bit in the middle there. Yeah, you can see that. And it's glowing real nice. It's getting nice and toasty. Yeah. We'll take it up a little bit higher. We'll go to 10 amps. Just push it. Yes, that's glowing really nice. I was just surprised how much that really glowed and how quickly it coils up to 350. I think it's plenty hot. We'll take it down to 5 amps and see if we can maintain the... Yeah, it's dropping off a bit. It's about 4.8 amps now. Yeah, it's cooling down. So it does need more current for it to keep this hot, but so that it's pretty surprising how hot it gets though. Alright, now for the more interesting bit and the part that you guys have been waiting for and bugging me about for like ever, and I've been wanting to do for a long, long time as well. And this is pancake induction coil heating or like flat coil heating. So um yeah. So I'm actually gonna boil some water with it. But um, they actually make stoves that use the same principle um, induction heating and they just basically have a coil and they're actually, I've heard they're pretty safe because you can just, the, ac the actual surface of the stove doesn't get hot but once you put a piece of metal on it then it would get hot so I don't know about if you're wearing rings or not if that would affect it but um, so I can just crank up the amps here put it up to maybe an amp no, amp and a half. Close enough. So, 20 volts, 1.7 amps. If I put this on, current goes up to 10, and it gets quite warm very fast. So, um, yeah, this is very hot now. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's actually really efficient. But, um, so it's it's a little bit warm. Not, not, not especially. But, um, so that's the voltage and the current. I'll put this on. 7 amps now, and I'll boost it up to 10 amps because I like to run this on 10 amps just because it heats the boils the water quite a lot faster. So it's actually 190 watts then at 10 amps, 19 volts. So we'll put the thermocouple in here so we can monitor the temperature. And already the temperature is up to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. This probe is so picky. And this was cold water before I started. It's getting nice and warm now. Coil's warm. It looks like it's actually starting to boil a little bit there. 140 degrees almost. Then once it gets up to boiling, I have to turn it down so it'll boil over. This is about 30 milliliters of water, including the, well, a little bit more. But the washer does take up some, too, so. But there you go. Boils it in about a minute. So it's not quite boiling yet, technically. It's just um, boiling right on the washer. Two hundred degrees Fahrenheit. I think my um, readout actually needs adjusted because it ne ever never gets up to two hundred and twelve. Oh, all right, we need to turn it down. Oh, it's just starts splashing everywhere. So now we're at about five amps, ten volts, a little bit less than five amps. And it's still nice and boiling. Two hundred and six degrees. <laughs> so it's not quite right. Yeah, I just need to adjust it. But so as you can see if I turn it off, instantly stop spoiling, turn it on. I can instantly control how hot it is. That's 14 amps there. <laughs> it's quite boiling. But it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. Seven amps there. So if I just set it at five amps and then I um, take the pot off. Now it drops to 1.3 amps. And the coil is not that hot, although I do have a fan cooling it off because it will get too hot. 
and it'll start to smell. <laughs> Put it back on, and it starts to boil again. And the current goes up to 5 amps. So I don't know, it's really cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, you could put some, put this on here and put a little bit of water on there. It'll probably start to boil in a second here. Yep, there we go. Don't want to keep that on too long. It'll melt something or burn something. <laughs> But yeah, that is my little induction heating stove. That works surprisingly well. And I'm actually only using one capacitor. It's this blue one right here. And I believe that is one microfarad. I'm not sure, but yeah. So seems to work best. I've tried adding other ones, but it just doesn't seem to... I'm not really able to notice an effect. It just dr seems to draw more current or something like that, and it, it, it I just don't see much of a difference. And I also have the frequency over here. The frequency ranges depending on the coil and the voltage. It is right now 61 kilohertz, but um, so I don't know. But yeah, that is my induction heating, so um, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.